Welcome to episode 38 of this Let's Play series. My name is Daz Takic. Welcome to the channel and we're going to get into this one. We're going to be starting the work on this trap system in through here. Now it's late summer. We're going to get into autumn. Quite often the invasions don't come until winter. Usually we have the caravan arrive in autumn. Now I need to get one other thing done really urgently before that time uh, because uh, I, I've just been informed. Thank you guys for the comments that you've been leaving. Uh, and I'm, I'm recording a, a, at least a month ahead now from when you've been watching this one. So it's uh, still 2022 at time of recording. <laughs> so I'm sort of uh, I'm just doing back to back sort of recordings at this point in time, which I I should I sort of enjoy doing that. But I also wish I didn't do that so that I, I at least I was sort of coming in fresh with the comments but um, anyway I'm a long 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 way ahead of the comments but please keep them coming because they're an incredible resource for other players who might come in and be a bit confused about something and then they can read the comments and think oh he made a mistake with that we should be you know should be doing that differently and it, it's incredibly valuable I actually I love the fact that you guys actually do that because uh, I also learn a lot from it it's one thing I've always enjoyed about doing YouTube videos is that I actually learn more about the games <laughs> because of that than um, than what I normally would, and I, I really do, as I say, I really do appreciate that. We're going to come back and start work on this uh, on this pump system because uh, we're going to need to get this one done. I'm a little bit concerned. Am I concerned? How concerned am I about this? I'm sort of half thinking of um, waiting until after the caravans arrive. I think before we do that one, let's do that. Let's actually wait until the uh, until we just in case there's a caravan that does arrive. If a caravan arrives and we haven't got like you know and we're halfway through the working on this and remember this is going into an aquifer layer through here which makes it incredibly difficult to uh, sort of manage over a short period of time so i'm going to i'm going to be setting up a pump system in through this side two different pump systems actually on two different layers to manage the excess water that will then come out of this particular zone and then there's going to be a, a way of then us sort of picking up the, the bits and pieces over time it's going to take a long time to do that one i'm even tempted I'm even tempted to leave this layer here and actually work straight from this layer. Um, do I want to do that? I could do that. I could do that. You'll see that I've left a gap in through here because I don't need this layer done until after the whole thing is finished. It can be operational at that stage. Look, I think what I'll do, oh, I'll think about it anyway. We'll think about it when we come back. So this is halfway down our fortress. It's at elevation 34. Uh, let's just go back down through the bottom. Now, one of the massive things that's actually changed uh, with the whole scale of things is that when we come back into my, into my trade caravan, I need an area for the wagons to park. I actually need a three by four area. In fact, this is going to be easy. I th actually thought that I had water all over the place in around here. I thought I wasn't going to be able to do it. I've got a ramp that comes back down at this particular point, leads into here, but I actually need to have a, a zone for the actual wagons to park. Uh, so I, I need to have more space in through th this side. And I just happen to have a three by four area right through here. I, I was actually thinking I'm going to have to get a military together, uh, break out into the into this zone in through this side and then start to sort of then work it. So I think it has to be right next to it. So we can actually just go across and just do this. And so I'll just make it into like a four by five. Why not? <laughs> so that would that that will be for the uh, for the parking of the in fact the four by four. Why don't we do that? This is now new in the game, by the way. So you do need to now have an area for the wagons to uh, to park. So we'll just go and do that one. The other thing I will do is just just make sure that my zones in include these. I'm sort of trying to remember when I when I haven't sort of done anything like you know just what I need to then sort of do in case we we lock the fortress down. You know what's accessible and what's not accessible. So I've locked off the area up ahead so that there's nothing on the on the trap layers as such. And it, oh, I didn't accept it. Damn it. And actually when you one this is one of the things I hope that they actually they did accept it. That's good. Okay, so um, it doesn't go through Z layers, unfortunately. It used to. The old version used to be able to, used to, be able to do burrows and create like a, essentially a 3D box of, of what, you know, to contain your fortress. It doesn't do that anymore. It just does it layer by layer by layer, which is a pain in the bum, an absolute pain in the bum. Uh, I'm going to have to do that also for my, uh, for when I go across, if I go to F3, um, is this is this zone all in it? No, it's not. No, it's not. And because we are directing these guys down, I'm going to have to make sure that this is done all the way through. So this is going to be a matter of painting the new uh, the new s systems in here, uh, which, as I say, is going to be a pain in the bum. So 
it will remember those. Uh, I'll just bring those in, but it doesn't remember the 3D. So if I go across and, for example, do that, I go up, this layer hasn't been done. So I have to go, keep on, I'm going to, have to do it layer by layer by layer. So anyway, what I'll do is I'm going to um, <laughs> just leave me to it. I'll uh, pause this and I'll, I'll come back when that's all done. Actually, I didn't realize the whole bottom end of the fortress hasn't been done. I think I may have done it when I lost all those recordings. Uh, and then since this time, we just don't have it. Now, I want to also then keep it also for future use, just in case I accidentally, or not accidentally, but if in, just in case I extend onto these, uh, which I'm likely to do at some point in the future anyway, because it's very easy to forget about this stuff. Extremely easy, as you can see. <laughs> So there's the bedroom layers for this one. I'll just go and get a bit more through this side. Looks like I'm going to have to do the uh, staircase as well. It's a long way up. Damn it, I am too. <laughs> okay, I'll pause again. Actually, I'm going to try something different actually here. I'm, I'm just going through now, sort of painting this little area. I think one thing I, I did record it, and I, <laughs> for some reason I had my microphone turned off, and so I had a whole episode where I was actually going through how macros work. And I didn't need to do it to any great extent as well. So I, that's also why a couple of episodes ago my, my camera switched to one other side because I'd been building macros for, uh, for building the things, for example, like the bedroom layers. Maybe I'll just quickly go and talk a little bit about macros now as well, just so we can get that out of the way. So I um, don't know if it'll work for these. I'll just accept that for now. So we're just going to go across and just to see what whether we've got keyboard shortcuts. So certainly burrows, you can see there is capital U. So we go into there now to paint it. Oh no, repaint is not actually does not have a keyboard shortcut. So I can't actually do that unfortunately. Hmm, that's a shame. That's a shame. I wonder if it would actually still accept it. I don't think it would. I mean, I could, I could test it and just, I can go through the steps on how to build a, uh, a macro just so you sort of see what's going to happen. Now, what I'd like to do is you've always have, you, know, you do have to start off in the designation menu. So it probably still won't work. The steps are to build a macro is to go across. I'll just see if it'll actually do it. Go to your settings up through here, go to game. And then where it's got uh, keyboard cursor enabled, go yes and click done and then return to the game. What that does is when you go into designation mode, like whether it be, uh, I'll just see if it will do it with burrows. Actually, no, it's not doing it. If I do the painting, it's not actually, no, it's not actually working. It's, um, what I'll do is I'll just show you while we're here, just the steps on how to actually do things. So in this case, I'm going to, if I go to any designation, for example, like digging is going to be the main one that we would use this for. So let's just say we were going to be digging a, um, a little area with a ramp somewhere off to the side, which is what I did for the uh, for the channeling all the way down. And so if we go across, the best way of, do, of doing this is to plan what you want to do. And so I'll just do it across, say, two levels, just so you get a bit of a feel for how it might then sort of work. So let's just say we're going to have, um, for whatever reason, <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason with this one, I like to do a plan of attack to start with. So I, I go into, into painting mode through here. So let's just say we're going to go down along three. Uh, we're then going to do a um, a channel down here and then on the next layer down we're then going to channel up across here another three and then channel down again actually that's three there three there yeah then channel down again and for whatever reason this is this is going to be what we're going to do. <laughs> so nice and simple. That's all we're going to do. That's going to be a, a, a thing where we can sort of then have like a, a designation that then goes all the way down to the fortress. Now, turn off your markers at this point. So you have now just got the actual thing itself. Now you can see there when I'm in designation mode, because I had switched on the settings game and we now have keyboard cursor enabled, yes, I can now use the keyboard cursor to do anything I like. I don't have to use the mouse to do this. So I can actually just go across as long as I've got like the designations if I go to M, which is a designation, I can then just use my like number six on the numpad to move across number eight to then go to the start position, for example. So go to the start of whatever you want to actually then go and do on the first layer. So we're just going to go across to here. I'm going to go control R. So you, again, it will only work when you've got this, um, when you've got the, the keyboard enabled. So control R, what you'll then notice is in the top left hand corner, it will then be flashing record REC. So it's now recording the macro. And so it's mainly, as I say, mainly really only used for mining. But um, if you've got like a lot of, of repetitive stuff that you need to do, I was hoping it would, I could use it for burrows, but I can't. <laughs> 
So in this case, we would then click on enter. Actually, I would, I would, I would designate M for mining again. So just, to, just to, so that it knows what to do. It records all of your keystrokes. So if we hover over here, we then have hot key is lowercase m. So I'm just going to hit the M key. Then I'm going to press enter. I'm then going to press the number two key twice in my numpad. Press enter again. That then designates the mining aspect. Then we go down one. I don't think I've recorded this. I know I've recorded it a few times, but I did lose the recordings each time. So I'm just going to go across. Uh, we're going to go to U, which if we have a look at this one through here, U is the digger channel down. So just going to press the lowercase U key. It did go across to that one. Enter, enter. It's now active. Press the plus on the non-pad to go down one layer. There's our, there's our markers. It's so, so much easier with the markers. Press number six to go across. Uh, press M again, so we go back to mining, enter, up a couple, enter, and then press the 8 again, press the U, enter, enter, and so we've now designated that one. And now we just want to go across to the, to the next starting point. Wherever we end up will be where it will then be ready for the next designation. So we just go plus and move across to uh, left one by pressing number four. That's it, control R to then turn, turn off the macro. So you'll see that the recording is still going. Control R to turn it off. Now it's in it's in memory. So we've now got it basically in the, not in, it's, it's in the local memory. Uh, what we would now want to do is we want to go across and do um, control S to save the macro. So I'll just call this one test. I do actually have another one called test. So it may not like it. I think it has liked it. That's good. And so um, so that is now a macro called test. And now if I go control uh, control L, I can then load in any of my macros. So I've got like a, a bedroom corridor, three, uh, six by three is, is what it is. Top left is just the TL is top left for me. Spiral ramp, which is what I did to sort of get the ramp all the way down, is spiral ramp four by four, top left again. So I know to go to the top left to start to designate that particular one. Test is the one that we just created. So we now just keep on using the numpad. Again, to use the macros, if you go back to redo it, you have to be in this keyboard enabled mode. Uh, we just go test, we just go enter. Now that's loaded it back into memory again. And now if I just go control P, so I can just go uh, and with this plays it. So control P, it will then draw it and then just keep on doing it. So I can just keep on doing it down through the uh, through the fortress and get a series of them. If I want to load in a different one, if I want to load in my bedroom layer, for example, I could go control L and bedroom corridor six by three, just press enter, control P, and it will then play what it needs to build a corridor of um, of the of the actual bedroom. So this is an, an area where I actually had set up a, a bedroom uh, designation. So I can very quickly do the, do the bedrooms. Uh, similarly, if I just go down to the next layer, for example, if I go Control L and I've got my spiral ramp, uh, if I just go down to that one, press Enter. So it's now loaded in. Control P. It will now build the spiral ramp. And control P. And so it's just going down for the use of the uh, of the mine carts. And so that's essentially what that is. If I just go back and right click and then just go back in and go to settings, game and enable keyboard cursor no and click on done, return to game. And now if I start to scroll up, we're gonna see all the designations that we had just created very, very simply. So it's sort of a, a nice, fast way of doing everything. So we've just now got all three of those, those things recorded. Now, of course, I don't really want those. So I'm just going to go across and uh, make sure I delete all of these as we go through. But it's a nice, fast way of, of, um, of you know, sort of mapping out your mining operation. There we go. So that's now all been, been, uh, been removed. So it just it gives you the plan. Anyway, that's macros. Tick, done. Uh, my voice is working, so my microphone is on this time. <laughs> so at least we've got macros out of the way. Uh, that's uh, unfortunately, I'm still in burrows mode. Um, we're painting the burrows at this point in time. Now, how far did we get? We got to there. All right, I'm just going to pause this and continue on up anyway. Yeah, so I've gone right up to the top of the fortress now and just made sure that all of the like the, the growing areas and things like this have all been sort of designated for what we actually want in through here. Now, one other thing I want to do here, actually, is that as we come down in off the top layer here, this is sort of like sandy clay soil, but then straight away we actually start to hit, hit into an area where there's like a lot of uh, hematite, so we actually can get iron from here. But there's not very much in the bottom of the fortress, so all of our all of our mining is going to have to be done up in this top area of the fortress. But it's very dangerous for us to auto mine 
these sorts of areas where we're trying to sort of, this is the lead into the trap area. So I need to isolate this so we don't auto mine it. It's very, very simple to do. So I might even show you, this is the layer below. Um, I might go, like this one's also got hematite. So let's go and start in here. Uh, what I want to do in through this side is going and setting up, um, I'm going to set up like a, uh, a zone where I then build and mine, auto mine the whole layer, which means we're going to have mines going off in all sorts of different directions. So we'll do that one right now. Now, what I want to do is I just want to isolate this zone that we have here. I'm not going to be building anything else, so I'm pretty safe to do anything else I like through here. And this will just be a, a good way of actually getting things done. I'm going to isolate this by digging all the way around it like this so that the actual area that we've that we don't want to be mining is isolated so I'll, I'll wait for that to be dug out now i'm pretty sure a couple of my miners are um uh you've yeah, got two miners there that that's only an adept miner i'll go and get the great miner and the legendary miner to only be doing mining so they'll end up coming through and uh, and doing this particular one so um and what i can do is i can start to um i think you've got an alert in through there that's okay now, where are we doing that? Actually, I'll just, um, just have a quick look and see where that is. Oh, okay, we've just dug out this area for the for the parking for the for the uh, caravan. That's right. So we now just go back up the top again. Shift F1 will take me up close to the top area there. So you can see that we've got like tetrahedrite back in through this side. We've got galena somewhere else in the fortress as well. We don't have very much metals, to be honest, but we can at least... We've got, we don't have any gold that i found, but we have got silver. So... Again, if you're playing the basic version of the game, you're going to then find that you will actually have a lot more metals than what I have. I purposely play with less metals just so that it's a bit more challenging in terms of what you can build and what you can't build. And I do want to be, in this episode, relying a little bit on the Goblinite that we actually have, but I'm not ready to do that one yet. Goblinite is the equipment that is dropped from invasions, and we've certainly got a lot of that. Like if I go to F2... Um, there's so much, if we have a look at the armor bin, for example, this armor bin has got anything with a with a round bracket around the outside, I mean, it's, it's come from the outside. And so there's got things like large copper helmet. We can't use anything that says large. And so I can remelt this down. And we'll be doing that at some point, just not yet. So I'm not ready to do that one yet. So I'm going to sort of be having it designated and then sort of having it moved in. So there's a lot of stuff that we can melt down that we've got in from outside. So there's heaps and heaps and heaps of it. So um, all of this stuff is stuff that we haven't man manufactured any of this, but we can make use of it. And there's a lot of it in through here. There's um, finished goods, bars and blocks. There should be more equipment. There's ammo bins. We have, again, stuff that's come in from outside. Um, what else have we got through there? Ammo, bars and blocks. So we've got a fair few granite blocks and things in through this side. An armor bin again. So again, all this stuff, whoops. All of this is from the, uh, from the outside. Um, armor bin back and through there again, all from the outside again. Um, some of these look like they're going to be fairly good values. Uh, 60 is not too much. So um, it's still spattered with the blood of the owner, <laughs> the old owner. It is. It does say it's very good. This is a large bronze cap, it's size for humans, it's spattered with uh, his frozen blood. I'm guessing that that's actually um, why there's like an extra designation. It's sort of showing, usually that means that there's some sort of decoration. The armor bin back into this side as well. Yeah, like, actually, that's what we just looked at through there. So anyway, there's certainly some things that we can do uh, with this eventually, but I'm not ready yet. <laughs> so I need to get my rail system working and all those sorts of things actually happening first. But anyway, let's just go back up through the different layers. And I'm going to mine layer by layer, essentially. But I want to get the iron so I can sort of start to... Oh, there they go. They're still actually still actively down in this bottom area. Um now we'll just go back up to this one. So any of these layers, I'll just, now that I've, I've really built what I need to have built, I'll just let them designate what's in through this side, and then we'll just let them auto mine. Now I need to find hematite back on the other side, not just around here. It's all on the wrong side, unfortunately. Um, there's a little bit of hematite in through there. There we go. So we've got hematite going off there, like a vein of hematite. You can see, you see already the picture of it. It's, it's come through this side. It hasn't extended across the other side of here. But uh, this is a safe way for us to then go and get hematite. Oh, here we go. Got another big vein of it in through the side. So now we have hematite on the 
other side of the corridor away from the zone that we want to protect. And so what we do here is we just go back into our mining and just go to auto. And so, so this one says dig only ore and gems selected and auto mine any or any ore and gems of the same type which are uncovered. So if we go and click on that one through there, we can then also change. So dig only ore and gems selected and dig only gem selected, sorry, dig only gem selected. So I can go that way to only dig gems and I can then sort of go and marquee select. It doesn't pick anything up, so there are no gems. If I go further down where there are gems, and I'll just find some in the in the walls here somewhere, uh, there's some gems. If I did that, for example, that would then mine out those gems. And I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to go and, uh, because we don't want to be touching those trap layers. It's very important that we don't accidentally mine into those trap layers. So by isolating the area, like what I've done through here, I can now auto mine back in through this other side. So this one, dig only ore and gem selected, it back in through there. This would be if I did a marquee select like this, it would then only pick up the actual ore and gems, but that's not what I want either. What I want to do is I want it to auto mine and I want it to just go off and find as much of metal as it can possibly find, much of this iron, because I'm going to be wanting to build a lot of weaponry out of this. And so we're just going to go back across into our mining. And in this case, we just go to auto and I can just click in the corner there. It'll then turn green and I'll do the same over through here. I don't want to do this. I don't want this one opened up at all. Like this is still safe where we currently are. So if I now just go and, and unpause, we'll then sort of see that they're starting to flash and she'll then, that will just grow. As they find more of the metals, they will just keep on working their, this particular vein and, and get the hematite at the bottom of this. So you can see she's just going off and, and doing this one. But by having this corridor around the protected areas, it keeps that safe. It's very, very important to do that. Particularly, don't do it down on a cavern layer. Uh, I had a horrific thing happen. In, well, not, it was fun, but it was horrific where I actually had a forgotten beast could just wander in through the cavern layer because there was a cavern layer way off to the side. You can see how far these veins go. They go a long way. Now we've got magnetite. Great, this is another one. So we'll just go and, and start working on the magnetite. So she'll only at the stage, this green one here is only doing hematite. But this is good. We've got two lots of metals in through this side now. So they're going off. There's more magnetite there. I'll just go and get that one selected as well. This one as well. And so as long as it's connected, they will then sort of find their way through. So you can see there that this mining operation is very, very specifically targeted to what it needs to happen. And of course, this is an area where, um, you know, the, the dwarves will just go and do their own thing. It's very, very safe. Now we're not gonna get close to the edge of the map here, but there is also a fail safe. It won't dig out the last little channel out of the map. Don't do that yourselves either, because that's then an access point in for forgotten beasts and things like that as well. So again, it, the game will look after, wow, look at all this. We have really found a lot of, uh, lot of metals in through this site. And so if you wanted to find out what the metals are, I think I've shown this before, just go and click on them. This is, this is a, an iron, and this is also an, a, an ore of iron. So two, two different ores of iron. Uh, that's working out quite nicely. Okay, we've still got the magnetite back up this way. Just go back across while it's on auto. Just go and select that one. Actually, there's some gems there as well. I'll get the, get the gem cluster. There's some, some more gems in that other side. Away they go. So digging away, and there's more hematite back over this side. So then they can just get all of this stuff. So this is a, a very, very good source of metal for us. And then that will then be taken down into the into the bottom layers of the of the um, of the fortress and uh, sort of sort it out. It's really quite a nice way of actually just you know getting your mining very, very particular. You don't have to micromanage it, it just does its own thing. Now we may I oh know we've still got a long way to go before we get to the edge of the of the map. But this is, um, I mean, in one sense, I, I, I was wanting to mine deeper into the, into the actual fortress, but I couldn't actually do it. It was um, uh, like I couldn't find any metals deeper down, so I, I have to mine these upper levels. So we're finding, um, okay, the beds have been completed. Okay, that's fine. Yep, so we're finding other things as well. So most of our value is coming from this top area. I'll just pause while it does this. Now, if we could be bothered, we could actually do another rail cart through the middle of the aquifer. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just going to let them sort of uh, lug, lug it all around. <laughs> so autumn has come now. So we should expect the caravan any time. Look at the petitions. Oh, we've got a lot of stuff in through here. 
I'm denying entertainment. Actually, one of the comments that actually came in was that um, somebody was actually uh, allowing all of these entertainers, but then putting them into hauling duties, <laughs> which I thought was a, a clever way to sort of get some use out of them. The, the drama for me is I don't want them entertaining and drawing all the dwarves into the tavern area where they can create fights and also can distract the dwarves away from more important things. But that was my reasoning. But the other reasoning is you can actually get them to do things if you're wanting to. So I'm just going to keep on denying any entertainment uh, requests. Nope, they're all gone. And we'll now just wait for the uh, stop for the caravan, which should be coming fairly soon, I hope. Wooden wheelbarrows are complete. That's good. That's all okay. That's all okay. So they'll eventually get back into here and do their mining. This is uh, limestone that's been that's been found in through this side as well. Yep, that's all okay as well. Off they go, just to continue their operation. So there's a lot of a lot that they can do here. Here we go. We're finding other things as well. So we can just keep on doing these auto mining. So just you got to remember to um, like if, if I try to do this with just normal rock. Like if I do this for example, actually you did find something else in there, but normally it's not going to find things. So you, you you can sort of you know just just go over things. If if there's anything in there to be mined, we don't want to do it in down in here. Remember, we want to keep that one fully isolated. So you can just go and drag and just sort of see. Okay, is there anything else that we're missing? No. That's all okay. And look, you know, if we need to then get more metals, this is a lot of metal that we've got from just this one little operation, actually, which is quite nice. We're getting more gems as well. So it's working out quite well. Um, and it is, you can see it's sort of now just fanning off. So I could, as I say, I could actually end up with that. And they're using the wheelbarrows now, which is great. So they're going to be very quickly, if I just go down to F3 down through here, there, they, there go the wheelbarrows. This is filling up very, very quickly. Let's have a look and see what's happening with the status of the uh, of the actual minecart itself. We haven't looked at that for a little while. So it's in the upper dump. It's actually it's actually working its way through towards the upper dump. It's actually where it's on the, on, on its way through. So it should be being pushed up through the um, through the through through here somewhere. In fact, the easiest way to do this is to go and have a look and see who is actually pu pushing the um, pushing it. So if we go across. And we might just follow this one up. You push the track vehicle. So this is Law, our miner. So we'll just go and have a look. So we're on negative 30. So we're halfway up. Um, we'll just go and, and follow the pushing of the cart. Might just reduce this one down a little bit. So, just so we can sort of see what's actually happening here. So I'll just get this down to a very, very slow frame rate. Um, probably be a little bit yeah, elevation three. We're getting getting close now to the to where we need to be. So, this is being guided, and it's sort of there's nothing in the mine cart at this point in time because we've got nothing down there. I don't think there is anyway. We we'll just sort of see if there is anything that it bring, brings up. If there is, it'll dump it. And so it, I'll just go through the process. We didn't quite get to finish all of this, but this should now be working correctly. And so maybe we'll just finish this episode off with a, uh, a look at the uh, mine, mining run. So we're up to 14, 15. We're starting to now sort of see, I think, the, uh, the actual, you know, where it's trying to now come through. And then she comes. It'll go around the corner to the dump. In fact, what I might just do is just remove that. Nothing to dump, so it stays there. But then the next operation is now ready. It's now at 0%. And remember, the upper dump was to just go back and press this. So presses it and just pushes it across to the other one. This will now be designated for loading. So remember just to go back across into here. So when it's 100% full of the of the desired items, it will then move on. So we'll just go and right click. And they're going to eventually come across and fill this thing up. I'll just um, now watch this one. This one, again, because we're guiding it, it's completely safe for any of our dwarves to be on the actual area. So they're just going off to pick up more of the actual bits and pieces. Um, someone will come and load this one up. I'll just pause it until we see this one loaded up. There's still a lot of things that they need to do. So it's actually been listed, but nobody's been been activated for it yet. I'll just let it continue on. I'm thinking we're probably going to get the traders coming fairly soon anyway. I do want to watch them come in when they do, do arrive. Um, so I'll pause this now until we get 
either one of these things underway. All right, so we've got more petitions. Nope, deny that. I'll uh, pause now. Okay, it looks like the first one is now coming. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's coming right when we're going to be watching this thing get full up again. But this is working. Like, it is actually working. So we're just going to click on OK. In fact, if we go to the very bottom, I'm betting we'll find a pile. Yeah, see how there's a pile of stuff that's been left there? Galena, Tetrahedrite, and Galena again. So they're slowly sort of moving them back up into this zone. So... So they are filling up this particular smelting zone. So we're going to be able to give orders fairly soon. I think I'll do that in the next episode where we start to really go through the production of what we want to do. We want to sort of start to get a lot of metal bars uh, ready first, and then we'll sort of move from that point forward into other things. Uh, so anyway, that, that, this is all working perfectly now, the, um, the actual minecart system. The fact that that's there and they're now filling it up at the top when it's full, I'll send it back down again. Uh, okay, the liaison is coming. Let's have a look and see where the caravan actually is. And this one is... Oh, it's still not a caravan. Still, not, It's only this... I'll just see if it does come through anything else. Nope, still not a caravan. Come on, caravan. No, so it's, it's still, it still doesn't require what we had set up, unfortunately. All right, well, that's, um, I might just leave it at the episode here. I'm just going to be trading again for whatever they've got. Um, we're still we're going to have we're going to have to make things out of silver I think to actually make to add the value to everything so we don't have any gold gold would be great um, so anyway the caravan has arrived the outpost liaison has arrived as well um, I don't think I'll bother explain oh, actually maybe we'll have a quick look at what the outpost liaison says so we'll follow that one through the um, through into where we are uh, da, 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 there's a whole lot of them at the bottom should be at the bottom here the merchant diplomat so Amos just come back in again so she's coming in from a different direction she'll be seeing all of the uh, how, how cleaned up everything actually is so she'll now go and find the uh, the mayor and should we got a mayor at this stage I don't know if we've got a mayor let's just have a quick look what, what have we actually got in here no, only an expedition leader. Okay, I'm sure that they'll now say, hey, you're big enough for a... Uh, we're over 50, so we're now going to be able to have a mayor. So we'll just follow her through. She will then find the main person. She'll just have a quick hello to everyone. Merchants have arrived and are unloading their goods. That's okay. Just keep on following her around. She's trying to attract the attention of the expedition leader. And yep, saying, hey, where are you? I'm in your office. Have a quick drink. There you go. All right, so we're now into diplomacy. Let's just pause this for a second. So she's now walked in. Um, so Odom is actually in through here. We'll just go to diplomacy. And so... Uh, so the expedition leader meets with the outpost liaison. So I'm your liaison from the mountain homes. Let's discuss your situation. So Amos then says, uh, Merit deserves a reward and I come to, empowered to establish this colony as an official land of our realm. Can you imagine the trade wagons? Of course, they have the responsibilities and the, nobility, and the nobility must live well. Do you have anyone suitable to recommend for elevation? Now, I think what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll probably just go with whoever's at the top of the list because they should have the skill set available for that one so i can scarcely believe this good news i have some recommendations now the reason you may not want to do this is when you start to get nobles you then have start to have requests or demands that they that they need to have different things done and the bigger and more powerful your fortress becomes the more these demands will then take hold so i'm just going to go i've got some recommendations in fact there's udib our best our legendary miner uh, could actually become the baroness of the uh, of this particular location is there anyone else there in the top little group that really does sort of ring a bell as somebody that we'd be wanting to have? I'm liking the idea of Limul as well, our chief medical dwarf, um, because she doesn't do much. And so she, as a baroness, she would actually be a good a good choice as well, I think. Um, I think I might go with uh, Limul, actually. I think I'll override my first instruction to go with whoever's at the top. I think we'll uh, su suggest Limul, the chief medical dwarf, as the, uh, as the baroness. And so she will now do all of the... Actually, that's one of the things. 
They do have to liaise with different people at different times. But no, let's just go this way. Limal can still uh, can be the actual Baroness. And so uh, there's much to share information added to these civilizations about information. Now, uh, requests for the next one. I'm just going to go back across. Uh, what do we need? Just go seeds. <laughs> I'll just go. I'll just, I'll just make that the only thing we get. Actually, maybe some cave wheat, uh, sweet pods, rock nuts, pigtail. Yep, let's just get all of those and uh, leave it at that, I think. I don't think we'll worry about anything else. We'll just click, actually, bars and blocks. Bars and blocks. We might get gold if they've got gold available for us. Where's the bars? Metal bars. Yeah, we'll get gold and we'll get iron. Actually, no, we're going to have enough iron ourselves. Maybe steel, so we can start to make things out of steel. Um, it would be get to, if we don't have a flux. We don't have actually have any flux stone, so that would be good to get some uh, stone, some just some stone actually. Some get some flux stone ourselves. So, flux stone is. I don't think we've got flux stone. Actually, I can't remember what flux. But which one of these are the flux stones? No, I won't worry about it. I won't worry about it. So. Um, I didn't remember any of that, did it? Because I right clicked. <laughs> okay, so I'll just do this again. Uh, we'll get steel. Uh, we'll go back down, get seeds. All of those except for the dimple cup. And that will do. Just click on done. All right, so that's going to be okay for that one through there. And so they want crutches next time that we're here. Now we can make them no problem at all. So we'll just click on okay. And uh, that's pretty much it. So I will leave it here. I'll just do the trading. I uh, won't worry about sort of recording that because it's just going to be looking through. I'm really just wanting to sort of just keep the interaction going with the actual traders. It's a shame that they, we didn't get to see the um, see the caravan come in. That would have been pretty cool, actually, to have it so that they end up sort of parking in this little bay that we've created for them. But just so be it. <laughs> <laughs> maybe next year, maybe next year we'll sort of see how things go. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode.